guys, Darren SCG here. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create very, very simple chess shops in Bedrock Edition. So these are very simple systems, like I said, but the power of these systems is that they allow you to make sure that the player has a minimum number of an item to either buy or sell. So there's no way the player can cheat the systems, um, which is very, very awesome, and they're very, very small systems. So they're very space efficient. So let's check this out. So this first one here is set up to sell one diamond for 100 credits. And then this one right here is just gonna sell 64 diamonds for 6,400 credits. So the way this works is we're gonna be comparing different different blocks to see if they're the same. In this case, different chests to see if they're the same. So let's, let's uh, try this out. So here I've put a bunch of filler items in here, just glass I renamed the filler. And if I drop one diamond in the center at a time, it will then sell that diamond instantly um, and what's cool about this system is you, you can sell as fast as you can drop one item in at a time. So here I can ho hover over with my whole stack and then on the PC I can just right click and drop one in at a time. And as you can see, I'm getting my money. Look at that. So as fast as I press the button, um, I'll get my money. And it's really cool because it's very, very quick. It's, it's as fast as you can press the button. Um, so it's, it's very nice, it's very simple. Um, it's very efficient. None of the code is running unless you are interacting with the system. So it's perfect. Uh, it's it's never it's never um, lacking any servers rounds. It doesn't. It's it's just really efficiently coded. Very simple systems. Um, so this is a trap chest. So this system, when I open it, it powers the system, of course. So the way this works is this is a trap chest that I've renamed um, in an anvil, of course, and then I just renamed this item to filler, um, and then left the spot in the middle open. When I open that chest, it powers the block beneath it, which then powers this repeater, which then powers this block. There's no ticks to delay on this. This is just a standard uh, repeater with one tick. Um, now right here, this block gets powered, this, this blue wool block gets powered, um, and then it powers the redstone. And the redstone dust will then power the system. All right. Um, so technically speaking, you could actually probably just forget the redstone dust and place this guy right on top. Um, that that would work too. Um, like you could place a chain right on top of this, but this is fine. I just do this. Um, okay, so now we're going to compare two chests and see if they're the same. Like I said, so let me switch my game mode, which is creative. So here um, it's just going to be a repeat unconditional needs redstone test for blocks. So again, testing for test for blocks. Make sure it's testing to see if everything about this block matches another block entirely. So here we're checking the block above, so this guy, and we're checking to see when this chest matches this guy, right? So this this coordinate right here is the chest outside that the player's interacting with, and as soon as this chest matches this one, then the rest of this, this code can run. So in this case, all I've done here is this is the same exact thing, same exact chest, um, with all the same filler item, every same, it's identical in every way, including the way it's named. And all I did was place one diamond in the center. And this means that when this chest out here matches that chest, which means it has, so once you have one diamond in it and it matches, then this code right here will all run successfully. So here we can chain conditional always active and then give that player money. Again, it's best practice in this game to target the player closest to the button or in this case, the chest, so that we, we have a much, much, much higher chance of targeting the player who interacted with the shop. So now we'll give that player 100 money. So again, if you don't already know this, uh, it's fairly common knowledge, but if you don't, yeah, you can interact with the shop from quite a distance and you can get your money and that's great. However, um, this system is targeting the closest player to the system to give them their money. And that's just the best way that we have to hopefully give the, pl the, the right player the money. But if you do this from a distance and you're using it like this, another player could walk between you and the system like right here and as you're selling they will get all of your money there's not much we can do about that in this version of the game because um, we can't identify who actually opened the chest or who actually clicked the button so um, just make sure when you're using systems like this any system really you should be up close to it um, so it's going to be targeting you without question and no one else can get in between you and the system okay so once that matches uh, the rest of the code will run like i said um, and we're going to target the player again at that location give them we're going to add the money to their account, um, their scoreboard. And now here's our sold message, chain conditional always active. And sold message, here's our positive sound of the player for that positive feedback, chain conditional always active. Here's the command again. 
And finally, this last step is vital. Um, you have to make sure that you clone a new chest back into place over here that does not have the diamond in it anymore. So that looks like this. So once I put a diamond in so it matches this, this command will run and at the end it will remove that diamond, which means that this is basically like the way that you, you basically give that diamond away and convert it into currency. So now it's gonna remove that diamond from there so you don't have that diamond anymore. If you don't do that, um, it's gonna be not, it's gonna be a very bad thing because this is what's gonna happen. If you didn't do that, what's going to happen is uh, this, for the entire duration that this is open, this is powered. Like when it, once you place one diamond in here, it's going to match. Like it's not gonna, it's gonna stay matching because you're not gonna, you're not forcing it to not match anymore. So it's gonna stay matching for the entire duration that you have this open um, until you actually close the chest or until you actually take the diamond out. So watch this. Um, you're gonna hear it spam, give me all this money. You hear that? You hear that spam? It's actually giving me tons of money. Um, for the entire time this is open, I'm getting 100 every game tick which is a lot. Um, okay, so we don't want that to happen, guys. So make sure you have the clone set up properly at the end to clone the chest above, which is just an empty version of that chest without the diamond in it. I'm gonna clone that back to the beginning, of course, right over here. Now, um, now that you understand that principle, um, that's the very simple principle that governs the entire system. So now the 64 version of that is literally the same exact thing, only we're just testing for um, a different count in that in this chest. So nothing about this system changes except this right here. And then of course we're going to give them um, more money this time. So here we're going to give them more money to reflect the higher number of diamonds that they're using. But um, just to show you, uh, this system will never ever run, obviously, unless this matches identically to the other chest. So this is why these systems are so valuable. They're like I said, very small. They have a very small footprint. But they also allow you to make sure that a player has enough items to use the system. And that they're the easiest way to do that. So here I put 64 diamonds in the center. You heard that ping. It finally it worked and I got the money. Great. Now here's a very quick example of a system like that that sells. Again, all the code is almost identical. So let's get more, more diamonds because this one is set up to actually um, sell us one Elytra for 64 diamonds. So same exact setup as before. We have a uh, trapped uh, chest which is renamed um, place diamonds in the center. You don't have to do that. This it's very evident that this is the case because this is open. You can name this whatever you want. Um, sixty-four diamonds. Like I might name this sixty-four diamonds for elytra or whatever you want. It's up to you. Um, again, repeating um, re repeater and with no ticks of delay. Just its default one tick. And then all this is all the same that you've already seen. Um, here, we're, like once it matches 60, sixty-four, so this is where you would put like whatever you want payment to be, of course. Um, once they put that payment in there, then it's going to give them the item. Chain condition will always active, and it will give them the item. Same exact coding as before. Essentially, again, we're going to be targeting the player closest to that chest, and same as all. Everything is very much the same. We have a chain conditional always active. Again, you want these all to be chain conditionals. They all have to be conditional. And here's my successful purchase message, and a positive sound again. Chain conditional always active. And lastly, as always, we need to make sure we clone an empty version of that chest back into place at the beginning. Now, you might be wondering, why do we use uh, the filler item? Well, the filler item is simply because it makes it easier to interact with the store, and well, the player knows exactly where they have to place the diamonds or the payment in order to use it, for one. That's one thing that's nice about it. Um, so and another thing I like about it is on PC, if I want to, I can shift press an item, it will hop into that spot like that, right? So that's, it's kind of, it's an easy way to put that item into the center. Um, if, of course, if I had like an opening up here and it did it, it would just go up there. We want to make sure that the item will jump right into the very dead center, like that. So in this case, when I pop the 64 up into that spot, I'll get an elytra. Bam, there we go, an elytra. Um, now, the only thing you have to understand that is a slight drawback of the system, at least with having filler items in here. Um, so this is optional. You need to make sure the players in your realm or server understand that they should not be touching these filler items, just leave them as is. Um, cause if you take this block out and it doesn't and like this, so you open a spot like that. Now this block will not match this one ever until there's another filler item here that again would have to be the same item that's the named filler it has to be identical. So because of that, um, that is a little bit annoying. Um, so hopefully players won't do this and mess it up. Um, the only thing you can do to again, um, counteract this is, is literally just make it so that 
it's like this where there's nothing, there's no items, and they have to physically place the item in the center of themselves. So if you wanted, you could do that. Here's an example. You could do that for all of these, um, like that. So now the empty version is literally empty, um, and here's the, the payments are in the center. Um, it doesn't have to be the center. It's wherever you want, but the the player has to has to understand where the payment needs to go because the idea is they need they need to, they need it to be identical to this chest in every way in order for the, the purchase to go through. So um, yeah, it's, it, it makes sense to either be the very first spot or like the very center spot, but some place that the player understands. So here we can give ourselves the diamonds. Um, so I have 64 diamonds, and of course now I can't shift press it into place because now it's not matching, right? It's, it's right here. That does not match where I put them right here. Um, so uh, I'd have to place them manually into the center, and then it would and then it would go through. So you can do that with both systems. Uh, if players are being stupid and taking the filler items out and messing it up. Um, you can remove it entirely, but that's the simplest way to make a very simple chest shop for buying and selling in better condition. And again, the best part about these shops is that they allow for a, um, a very specific number to be checked for. So there's no way to play a the system. They have to have exactly that number of items to either buy or sell. Um, so thanks for your time, guys. Um, I'll have more quick videos like this in the near future. Um, they won't all be super long, I promise. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you um, like this video, if this was helpful for you, um, if you're going to use this on your own server. Um, yeah, uh, please subscribe, comment, share, like, and do all that fun stuff. Uh, and have a nice day, guys.